gospel according to John in the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had been invited to the wedding. And when the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern of that is to you? Is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. And when the steward tasted the water, the water that had become wine, and did not know where it had come from, the servants who had drawn the water, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine when the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. Reaching out to touch the lives of 
of people that I couldn't reach. And there was something really reassuring about that because it reminded me of something that we all need to be reminded of, that we're not in it alone. One of the things that the uh, keynote speaker, Tyler McLaurin, said was, American individualism is killing the church. And he's right. It's actually doing more than killing the church. It's actually killing us as well. We have this concept in our head of what a, a being, everything, everything. We are all expecting ourselves to be Renaissance men and women and be able to do everything. Let's start by looking at what we, the expectations we have of our kids. And I'm not saying that these are what parents expect of all of their kids, but this is what culture, culture expects of young people on a whole. We expect our kids to go to school for eight or more hours a day, and then go home and do several hours of homework. We expect them to get A's because, you know, anything less than that means they weren't trying hard enough. By the way, C still means average, people. <laughs> C is acceptable, all right? You know what they call a pastor who gets a C? Pastor. <laughs> and I passed Hebrew by five tenths of a point, all right? Hebrew was not my gift. That was not one of the gifts God gave me. We expect that all, we expect that, and then, and then beyond that, we expect them to be in clubs and in social activities. We expect them to spend time making, you know, doing all kinds of different activities and excelling in them. And then beyond that, we expect them to also have time for family and church and everything else. And then, once they get high school, this was the shocker for me. 55% of um, parents expect their kids to be working in high school, to have a part-time job. I'm not saying that having a job in high school, I babysat all through high school. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have a job. But I am saying that it's another thing we add most of the time around sophomore year. And I know I see a lot less kids after their sophomore year in high school. And a lot of them are because they're working. I'm not telling you not to get jobs. I'm just telling you what it is. Now, adults, we have Kids, it's a lot of pressure because we expect them to be everything. And we expect that of ourselves too as adults. We expect ourselves to work upwards of 50 hours a week. By the way, all the studies show that 40 hours is an optimal time. All of the studies show that working in excess of 40 hours a week becomes counterproductive at some point. We expect us ourselves to make it to work 50 or more hours a week, hit the gym, cook healthy dinners, still keep romance alive in our relationships. I, I've seen what the magazine covers are saying, okay? I, good God. Nobody has time to look like that. Nobody. All right? And then add the spiritual and all that development on top of it, and it's no wonder. Because we expect ourselves to be able to do all things for all kinds of things. God didn't make us that way. That's not what church is. Church, would, we would be little islands of ourselves if we could do everything. But that's not what church is. Church is all kinds of people with all kinds of gifts coming together so that you don't have to be everything for everyone. All right? Trust me. You do not want me to be the person running the kitchen for, uh, you know, a dinner. All right? You just, I'm good at following directions. Haley's laughing because she remembers the macaroni incident. All right? Ask any of the youth about the macaroni incident, and you will know why I'm not supposed to be in charge. I still maintain it was good. It just had more cheese than macaroni. I didn't see a problem with that person. But... The idea that we're supposed to be able to do all things. Guess what? Catching mice is not my gift. <laughs> all right? Thank God for the exterminators and people it is. I know I got home from Christmas break this year and I thought my sink was all backed up 
And I tried to unclog it myself and ended up making more of a mess and tried a couple times and then I said, you know what, why am I doing this? And I called my landlord and he took one look and he called the plumber. And the plumber fixed it. I don't need to spend that time and energy doing that. And you don't have to be all things for all people. I am not the person that you call if you want directions. I ended up in Evelyn trying to get to Brainerd. <laughs> Thank you. I find that hilarious. All right? Honest to God, I did an entire tour of the Northeastern Minnesota City trying to get to Brainerd. <laughs> it was terrible. I am the person you call if you want a really awesome spreadsheet and all your data charted out and mapped and you want to see the trends for the last four years because I love it. I'm the person you call if you want a great PowerPoint or if you want to play stump the pastor because I love it when people ask me questions and I don't know the answers and I say, let's talk about that. Those are my gifts. And it's okay that I'm not good at everything. And it's okay that you're not good at everything. Because God didn't make us to do that. God made us to be community, one body of Christ, with many gifts. Find that gift that you're passionate about. And let go of some of the stuff that maybe is not your strength. And maybe someone else has a Share God's love in the way that God made you to share it. And that's the beautiful thing about our readings today. Is that it takes all of us. Because you can reach somebody out there that I can't. You have a gift that I don't. And it's only when we all work together for to all the body of Christ and we all value each other's gifts instead of trying to compete saying, well, I'm just as good at this as you are. And that's what was happening in Corinth. But when you value each other's gifts and lift them up and encourage the growth, it's amazing what God does. The wine runs out when you try to do it. And I love Mary in this text because Mary, Mary shows us the that I hope I have someday. It never even crosses her mind that Jesus isn't going to do something about the problem. Jesus says, why am I going to be concerned with that? And Mary just looks at the servants and says, do what he tells you. He's going to fix it. We come back here every week because we are <coughs> by a world that tells us we have to be all things to all people at all times. We need to come back to the table and back to this room, and we need to be surrounded and loved and embraced by each other and say, it's okay that you're not perfect. It's okay that you're not good at this or that you did that that didn't work out or that you needed to ask for help. And it's okay that you need to come back to the table and taste and see that the Lord is good and be filled again with his love. Because that's what keeps us going. That's how we change the world. That's how the body of Christ works. And it's not just us here, St. Andrew's body of Christ, but the body of Christ everywhere. The body of Christ is humanity. And it's all those gifts being used for the good and the betterment of Celebrate each other's gifts. Celebrate your own. Honor the things that aren't your gifts. And help each other. Live and love and learn and know that you don't have to do it all. Because you're not alone. God didn't make us to be alone. We're in it together. And that's how things change. Taste the sea. Be there. Go for it.